Okay, we're going to start <laughs> with the nation. Banks limit customers to 20,000 naira over the counter. Foreign airlines trapped cash now um, $743.7 million. Lady kills landlord over electricity bill. Global crisis likely with collapse of two U.S. banks. Three years after China reopens borders to foreigners. Dosumu other Lagos PDP bigwigs back on Wulu. Federal government reserves $618 million for youth in tech and be proud of 20, uh, February 25th polls, says UK Envoy. All right, which story are we starting with? Your headline. So your headline. the punch went to town following the, you know, the new directive by the CBN. We saw that banks have started paying um, cash over the counter. Cash is now limited to 20000 per withdrawal, but banks have started paying. Also, they noticed that the ATMs were getting queues again. And, you know, they took the inventory across Abuja, Lagos, banks, different banks, and they said, you know, they are now paying. Uh, well, some of the banks are paying as low as 5000 per withdrawal uh, to one customer, and some are paying as high as 20000 but 20000 seems to be the maximum that they are paying across all the ATMs that they check. Of old notes. Of old, uh, yes. Banks have resumed paying out old notes. This report is for the old notes. All right, so... So I have a human interest story. Okay. Um, a woman kills her landlord in Ogun State. So a 33-year-old mm -hmm. lady, Ifoma Osai, uh, has been arrested for allegedly killing her landlord. They said there was over a minor difference in their bills, um, electricity bills. They said the landlord came over and then she um, grabs the landlord by his private parts, drags him until he falls to the ground. Unfortunately, by the time he was rushed to the hospital, he was confirmed dead. So this story is just to say we need to be careful how we express ourselves when we're unhappy with each other and when we are angry. Keep your hands to yourself. Use your words. If you cannot use your words, lock the door and go to a police station and report the matter. Now look at, sadly, we have a situation. All right, like so for those of us, that's really, really sad story. Mm -hmm. I really, um, for those of us following international news, there's been shockwaves across the country, as, across the United States, as we know that um, the Silicon Valley Bank, Bank mm -hmm. crashed. <laughs> uh, they said about $100 billion has been wiped out of the U.S. banking system following the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank. Um, this had also sent shockwaves across Wall Street, and that affects uh, many banks globally. They're saying that many of the, um, shell, the, the, the um, shareholders uh, dropped by 75%, despite even the president reassuring the banking system was still safe. Major U.S. banks, Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, many of them had plunged. J.P. Morgan down 2.7%, some down 7.4%. Um, and also there was another bank, Signature Bank in New York, also closed uh, by the authorities. They feared that keeping the bank open could threaten stability of the financial system. And there was a guy, Dr. Doom, if you recall, he was somebody that um, had actually predicted the 2008 financial crisis. He said that he's very sure that the, the Silicon Valley Bank um, crash poses a risk of global contagion. So that's a risk across the world. Yep. And it's something that we must continue to observe globally. And now we're keeping our monies in the bank. Anyway, let me take the good news from China, which is that, I think that's a hot topic, but let's just focus on this. China reopens its borders. Good news. 2020 was a major year, affected everybody, but China locked their borders March 28, 2020. And since then, their borders have remained locked until now. Good news to those who already, who had previously gotten multiple entry um, visas to get into China. They said it's still valid till now. And China is announcing that they want to restart, um, well, they want to um, revive their economy. China is the second, world's second largest economy. And its dom domestic tourist industry um, has been stopped for the past three years. And they're expecting to revive that. The entire world is still re trying to recover from what happened with China because there's still shortage of some goods um, across the world, so we're happy that Great. China is getting themselves together. The punch. Naira crashes, banks ration old notes, NLC insists on seven-day ultimatum. Review a thousand Naira and NIN fee, council tells NIMC. INAC will prosecute electoral offenders with speed, says Jakubu. Or your SDB candidate withdraws and backs McIndy. Fuel price hike imminent over the power supply marketers won. Dollar shortage, banks slash travel allowance and foreign school fees. Almost 13 million cyber attacks recorded during polls, says the federal government. 
and uh, Ferry Foreign Airlines trapped funds hit $743 million, says IATIA. Okay, which story are we starting okay, with? So, um, yesterday I took the NIN story where I said that they'll be charging 1,000 naira right now if you are going to collect for collecting your passports. But um, the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council on Tuesday called on the National Identity Management Commission to review its in, um, this new fee that they have um, put across Nigerians and other African countries. And they're saying that... Um, that this would not, that first of all, they said that um, PEBEC -E has taken note of this announcement by NIM, NIMC, and um, for them, they feel that this would affect, you know, the way that people are doing business in Nigeria. But they also brought to their attention the fact that this particular agency that was um, put together is supposed to, um, M MDAs, that's ministries, departments, and agencies are supposed to, you know, confer with them on issues like this. Um, they're supposed to have like monthly um, um, reports that they make to this part, um, to the agency, but it seems like this was done away from them, above their heads, and so they are saying that they think that they should reconsider it, even though they understand that it's supposed to make for easier. Um, collection of passports and better services. Right. They do not think that that 1,000 Naira would um, sit well with a lot of the stakeholders. Okay, another story in punch. <coughs> petrol story. So according to Ipman, we have another crisis looming, and this is, of course, because of the NNPC's inability to provide enough um, products or widen the, the gap of uh, supply. So according to the National Publicity Secretary, uh, pub, sorry, National Public Relations Officer of Ipman, Chief Ukadi Kechinedu, he says that the NNPC had, and um, its retail subsidiaries across the country are the first point of the contact when it comes to delivering of petroleum products, and they are not spreading the delivery to the exact number of trucks of fuel that are meant for the independent marketers. They said that with about 3,400 3, tickets lying around waiting at the NNPC retail account, they are not getting enough supplies. And until the NNPC has finished loading products to its own outlets before they attend to independent marketers. And he gave an example of what is happening across the country. He says 80% of filling stations across the country are owned by IPMA members, and it's surprising that the NNPC is not uh, supplying petrol to IPMA members as first contact. As at this morning, trucks are lined up all the way to Finanja bus stop on the Badagri Expressway from the um, Trade Fair bus stop, and they're on both sides of the lane. So whenever I see those trucks, I know that uh, another crisis is looming. But I hope that you know, they conduct themselves properly so that those of us on that side don't start to pay the price for the consumption of fuel across the country again. It happened in December last year. It was not good at all. OK, let's move on now to Daily Sun. Actually, I thought I had a story here. Um, yes, I was going to take a story of do, do, uh, bank banks. I was trying to remember the story dollars. I was going to take here. Yeah, dollars. Yeah, booty. So <laughs> the deposit money banks have slashed the amount you can get for um, personal travel allowance as well as school fees. Customers can apply, but it is a <coughs> tough time getting foreign exchange because we have a shortage crisis. Um, in, a, in an email that was sent to customers, they said that PTA allowance has now been slashed from $4,000 to $2,000. The truth is most of us apply and we only get less than $2,000. Also, lenders have cut overseas school fees from $15,000 per semester to $7,500 per semester. This is going to have a major um, cost major challenges for many of Nigerian students that are studying abroad and we also have the challenge of um um, they, they said that uh, the economic and financial analysts are advising the CBN to devalue the local currency with the view of bridging the gap between the official and the black market rates. INEC had a meeting, yes, an interagency consultative meeting yesterday where they had told the politicians to caution their supporters, stressing that March 18 governorship elections is likely to be more tense and they should caution them to um, not, that is a contest and not a war, that he should just take things easy, and that he has instructed that um, <clears throat> INEC must set up a legal team to speedily prosecute any electoral offenders. So they're not going to drag it, they're going to be a speedy process, and they're going to ensure that, um, that you know, 
all, all those who are planning some kind of um, disruption of the polls will be quickly prosecuted and sent to jail. We're now quickly now to Daily Sun, Gilbert mm -hmm. Assembly Polls. NSA gives and military security agencies marching orders. <coughs> Excuse me. Over 120 anti-corruption CSOs resume protest against EFCC chair. $498,000 money laundering. Court reserves judgment on remanded reps member. INEC chair lacks credibility to conduct other elections, says obese supporters. Over 12 million cyber attacks recorded during the presidential poll. Old Naira notes Knox for Buhari and Emifili. Presidential election PDP article returned to tribunal with fresh application. Okay. So, okay, so remember the House of Rest member in River State was found with um, um, about $500,000? Yes. Yes, so he's facing a money laundry um, charge in River State. He was actually taken to court by the police um, under the Office of the Federal Attorney General. But interesting times because the Attorney General of River State has applied to take over prosecution of the matter. And the judge, his defense counsel did not count it. I'm just saying. It's my just, I'm just thinking he's a wiki kind of... It's legal to that. But it's legal. It's legal. There's nothing funny or legally here. Yeah, and in-house. So, but the court has reserved judgment and adjourned till May 4th. So okay. okay. Smiley. No. Smiley Nima. I like it. I'm just thinking. Anyway, the federal government has said that a total of... Hmm. 12,988,978 cyber attacks were recorded during the 2023 presidential and national assembly elections in Nigeria. The Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Professor Issa Pantemi, um, disclosed this in a statement yesterday. He said threats to public websites and portals average, that's normally would average um, 1,550,000 1, daily. But he said that during this presidential and national assembly elections on the day, it skyrocketed to over six, 6 million. That's nearly 7 million attacks. And he goes ahead to list, he said during this period, a serious a series of hacking attempts were recorded, including distributed denial of service, email and IPS attacks, SSH login attempts, brute force injection attempts, path traversal, detection evasion, and forceful browsing. And then he says it is worth, it, it's worth noting that the center successfully blocked these attacks and escalated them to relevant institutions for appropriate action. Okay, so um, the indigenous people of Biafra have accused the DSS Department of State Services of hiding the truth about the health state of um, Mazi Namdekanu. According to their spokesperson in Mapowerful, he said that if they are sure, they, according to them, they feel like um, Namdekanu is suffering from health challenges, malnutrition and heart condition. And if they feel that they are sure he's in good health, they should allow um, Kanu's Personal, do, personal physician attend to him. He said that the statement by Adeyemi Olumide, who says Kano's health is normal, is false, and that if the DSS isn't hiding anything, they should allow him to have access to um, his personal physician. Basically, that's All right, so there's still issues concerning this cash, as we had discussed earlier. Yes, where we can spend the 500 and 1,000 naira notes, but the issue is still the fact that well, there's still limited cash available. People, there's still long queues at the banks and the papers reports have said uh, the reporter went around to see that there's still long queues and there's got to be something done there's to no see 200, how there's, no 100. There's, there's not enough we notes get available for the banks for people to, to withdraw there's still 20,000 hour limit mm. per person and that's still a problem for many nigerians and they're asking that people should that um, the government should review this policy so that people can have cash in hand vanguard intrigues as governors others intensify battle for states Respite as banks accept 500 and 1,000 naira notes. Presidential election, FG records 12.9 million cyber attacks. Nigerians should be proud of 2023 poll, says the outgoing UK envoy. Over 130 CSOs, lawyers resume Bawa must go campaign. Certificates forgery, 43 Nigerian nurses face criminal charges in the US. Whoops. Polls, NSA threatens severe sanction for electoral offenders. Paul Sean Ethnic Violence Coalition tells Nigerians. Okay, okay which so story? The U.S. Department for Health, uh, of Health and Human Services Office Inspector General and other law enforcement partners in the U.S. are investigating 75 persons for wow. certificate forgery in nursing and out of the 75. Mm -hmm. <coughs> How many? 
43 are Nigerians. Have you 43 now? For the three are Nigerians, and um, they said this, there's a scheme in uh, alleged scheme mm -hmm. involved uh, um, in the selling of fake and fraudulent nursing degrees, diplomas, transcripts obtained from accredited uh, Florida-based yeah. nursing schools to yeah. registered nurses mm. and licensed practitioners in the country, and that um, even though the, it's called an operation, Operation Nightingale, even though those nurses are allowed to practice, they must probe their certificate and if they found they, they, they stand the chance so yeah, agencies selling certificates to nigerian to nurses or investigated and they found oh. that they sold to 43 nigerians oh. who are also using so it wasn't like the nigerians is an american, american uh, agency so it wasn't like that we are just wasn't recipients like of yes, this yes, guy's fraudulent yes, activity yes, so yes, 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 it's, not, it's not our idea yeah. i'm just hoping yeah. Ah, no, we are still investigating. If you use fake documents, you, you must have no fake. You, they well, well, no, 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 no. You would know, no, no. You will know that it's fake. No, you, you, they do courses online. The do, no, 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 no. The document is to show that you have gone to nursing school in some of these institutions in Florida, and you did not go to nursing school in Florida, and then you now come and say that you did not know. Then they give so you. We have. Whatever. There's two sides to be for well, no, there's, a, the, the the, yes. there's another exam they do to qualify. So they have their certificate, mm. and then they'll take exams in the yes. states, in different states, just as we do yeah, in yeah, yeah. Mm. there. They have different states yeah, qualification course. exams they will do again to qualify. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. most of them are eligible to work with that second yes. oh, okay. But that this first one. one. Mm -hmm. All, All right, right. another story. We have the outgoing um, British High Commissioner in Nigeria, Katrilia. Katriana Leng has said that there were setbacks in the Saturday, tw February 25th presidential and national assembly electorates, but that there were also positive developments. And she says that um, she's been here since the 20, um, that she has seen a uh, remarkable difference since the 2019 elections when she arrived. And she says, yes, there, there, there are some disappointments, but, you know, largely Nigerians should be proud that we have shown um, progress and it shows that what and progress in the right, of course, progress in the right in, in a positive way. And she says, we're the largest democracy in Africa. African countries are looking up to us. So and then she also says that we're resilient people and you know, very, proud of and very proud of <laughs> us. And um, our own uh, president of the Senate also said, as you know, Nigeria and Britain, we have come a long way. You know the usual Nigerian yeah. British story. Yeah. Okay, so um, leaders of the ethnic-based organizations, civil society, cultural, artisan, faith-based community groups yesterday expressed their worry over what they described as um, a slide into hate and disdainful provocative statement by the political and social media actors. And they're saying that as we're going into the, into, um, the Saturday elections, we must avoid anything that can support ethnic violence and conflict across Nigeria. And they also want political parties to shift their swords and allow peace to reign as we round up to the governorship and House of Assembly elections on Saturday. Moving on quickly now to the Nigerian Tribune. Let's find a story of not taking governorship poll more complicated than presidential says NSA. Mm. Banks comply with CBN directive. Um, landlord dies after tenant drug squeezes his manhood over electricity. Yeah, I'm it already. Electricity bill. Homicide. Oh, that's a story too. Mm -hmm. Homicide. Police declare Bauchi lawmaker wanted place for a million naira bounty on him. Um, presidential election. 12 million attempts made to hack Nigerian cyberspace. Anxiety as FAO releases food security nutrition assessment in 26 states. Rule of law. Over 20 anti-corruption CSOs international lawyers insist Bauer must step aside. Okay, which story? Yeah, so the force headquarters uh, has declared a serving member of the House of Reps representing Bochi Federal Constituency, Yakub Ushehu Abdullahi, wanted. And the lawmaker was declared wanted by police for alleged criminal conspiracy causing grievous hurt, disturbance of public peace, and um, culpable homicide. Um, so there's a picture of him with the caption wanted that has been put out by the police. So if you have any information, Concerning him, there's also a one million naira reward for anyone with any with uh, with any useful information that could lead to the arrest of this 45-year-old lawmaker. Hmm. Okay, that is all we can take on today's front page review.